Happy Thursday! This is Crystal Lee Moore Lucier, also known as your home sweet home 519 realtor, Crystal Lee Moore, with Royal LePage Triland Realty in London, Ontario. And this is Realtor Life, a fun and entertaining way to learn about life in the trenches as a real estate professional in Ontario. Every week, I will share some insights on goal setting in the spirit of Brian Buffini's Five Circle Goals. Five Circle Goals are goals in the five circles of our lives, spiritual, family, business, financial, and personal. I will also share a story from my experience or the experience of a colleague while maintaining the privacy of the parties involved, and finally, the lessons learned from the stories, which will hopefully help you along the way. Let's get into the five circle goals. Brian Buffini is a real estate coach and he created a real estate coaching company called Buffini and Company and they're based in Carlsbad, California. Royal LePage is a big supporter. Every week, I'm going to mention one goal in each of the five circles that will hopefully help you get inspired to pick your own five circle goals. For this week, my spiritual goal is to watch an episode of Oprah Winfrey's Super Soul Sunday. I only recently became acquainted with Super Soul Sunday, and I'm loving it. I listened to an interview with Maya Angelou, and then I also watched a short clip with Brene Brown, and I'm hooked. So this week, that's my goal, to at least listen to one. My family circle will be filled up with new movie nights every week with my stepdaughter. We've decided that we're going to start watching all of the silly movies that she hasn't seen before and I think are important, like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days and Sweet Home Alabama. We're also going to be doing a mini photo shoot to support local and get some Christmas photos for this year's Christmas card. My business goal this week A colleague introduced me to a book called The Perfect Week Formula. So I'm trying to identify where I'm spending my time by outlining what I'm doing every 20 minutes for the next three days. Wish me luck. Our financial goals are that we're saving for an income property. And personally, I'm trying to learn the ukulele and stick to my fitness routine with Beachbody On Demand. Those are mine. I hope that you have some exciting ones. Feel free to write yours down and share them with me. Okay, now on to our story. There are days when my chosen career seems like, dare I say it, an easy one, but then there are days like I had when I first became a full-time realtor in Guelph, Ontario. My client, we'll call him C, was my very first seller client, and he is everything that I thought he would be. He was direct, he was just a little bit suspicious of me as a realtor, and he just knew that his house was the house. You know the one, the cream of the crop, the nicest house on the block. Many of us, myself included, often believe that our house is nicer than the other houses on our street, and we're happy to believe it. C advised me that his home was going to sell for almost $80,000 more than my research said it would. List it and they will come, he said. I was new and I was hungry, and this was a referral from an out-of-town agent. I was ready to move mountains to get this little bungalow sold. So we went with C's list priced, and I said that we would see. I hired my very first professional photographer, Hans. I met Hans at an open house, and I was going to be doing everything right for this listing. I do still remember though, writing Hans that check for $153 at the time and wondering how I was going to make sure that I had that money in my account for him. This was six months into my eight month start as a realtor and my break into the market was going very slowly. Hans has been my photographer for every home I list in Guelph. He's part of the team and he's part of the family. The photography session was actually fun and we only had to retake one photo because I was in it by accident. As a seasoned agent now, I have become an expert at the hide from the photographer game during listing photos. There's gotta be an award for this by now. The photos were taken, the listing went live, and I was in business, or so I thought. 
It went very slowly, and I tried everything. I baked apple pies at the open house. I warmed up the apple pies. Who are we kidding? I'm not a pie baker. We had a blizzard one day and a hot and sunny day the next. It was crazy. I offered free pizza and advertisements to buyers, and I kept my seller updated, even when it was hard to be the messenger of the unfavorable news. It would take me 99 days on the market and four price decreases to sell the home for almost, you guessed it, $80,000 less than we had listed for. This home that was lovingly fixed up by my awesome client and had some questionable siding had also piqued the interest of many people. It had a gigantic backyard and was on a cul-de-sac. My client had an offer on a new home though, so he finally agreed to sell his home for what the market value showed us it was worth, much to his dismay. Also, much to his dismay, his lender, who was a mortgage broker, I hadn't connected them, forgot a few steps in his approval, and as it turns out, they were a big deal. They forgot to run a credit check. C had amazing credit though, or so he thought. As it turned out, C also had a big heart and had co-signed something for someone in his family, and they had not kept up their side of the deal. Uh-oh. As the closing day for his home came closer, we discovered something very unfortunate and disastrous. After all of that hard work, C was now going to be homeless. Throughout the entire process, and even to this day, I think of C fondly, and even better, he thinks of me fondly. I kept him updated, I worked hard, and I did everything I could do, and I know he appreciated it. We still keep in touch to this day, though less often, and his story was one of the most important lessons of all. Always double check those approvals. What lessons did I learn on my very first listing? Let me tell you. Always verify the zoning of a home before you list it. Another agent will call you on it if you haven't done your homework, and this applies to everything you need to look up. Always hire the professionals to do what they do best. You were hired to be a realtor. Hire the photographer to take the photos. People can tell when you've taken your own photos. At least there aren't the little digital dates in the corner anymore, but they can still tell. You also want to make sure that there aren't any animals or dirty dishes in the sink. And that goes to hiring a stager. Stagers can help you make sure the house looks its very, very best. Also, trust your ability to price the home. I level with my clients right away. If they want to list the house at a certain amount, we can do it, but we'll have to watch that market activity very carefully and change if needed. Overpricing results in a longer market time and lower sale price. Always keep your sellers and buyers updated, even when it's unpleasant. They will appreciate it. Keep your foot on the gas and don't give up. Some very creative thinking comes in handy when you are 60 days in and you have lowered by 40,000 and still aren't selling. I've had experiences where I've had candy bags made up with little pictures of the house on them. I've shared the listing on Facebook pages and websites where my clients have used the products. It works well. Work with your clients to help them select who they are going to for lending, legal services, home inspection, renovations, painting, and repairs. It helps you strengthen your relationships with your client and with your network of professionals. Never show up empty-handed to see your clients. This is something I learned from Brian Buffini. Whether it's an apple pie, candy, or a little pop pie gift, your clients appreciate the gesture. And it's gotten to the point where I don't feel comfortable showing up unless I have a little gift. Always keep the client's best interest in mind. If you aren't all about yourself and your commission, they'll notice. Celebrate with them if need be, and mourn with them if you need to. You and your clients are connected very deeply while your home is listed. You should honor that relationship. And finally, learn from every experience and teach others if you can. Serving others truly feeds the soul. Well, that's it for this week. If you have any comments or questions or feedback, you can find me on Instagram at your home sweet home 519 Realtor, on Facebook at Crystal Moore Real Estate Sales, or by going to my website, 
www.crystalleemore.ca. Stay happy, healthy, and grateful, everyone. Have a great week.